Hi Marie, check out my hair. What you're seeing is static electricity at work. And this is what causes lightning, except in a much larger scale. Today we are going to be doing a couple of fun experiments using static electricity. These work best in dry conditions. So if it's warm and raining outside, you might want to try this another day. For this first experiment, you'll need a PVC pipe, which you can get from your local hardware store, a piece of cloth, and an empty can. Rub the PVC pipe with the cloth. Put the pipe close. Look what happens. Why does this occur? Before we get there, we need to understand that all things are made out of atoms. Atoms consist of three particles, negatively charged electrons, positively charged protons, and neutral neutrons. Rubbing the pipe causes it to snatch electrons from the cloth, making it become negatively charged. Bringing the pipe near the can repels the electrons on this side of the can. They move over to the other side. This means that this side of the can is now positively charged. Just like magnets, the positive side of the can and the negatively charged pipe attract, causing the can to move towards the pipe. The same thing happens to create lightning, except there's a whole lot more positive and negative charges involved. A big spark occurs when lots of electrons move from one place to another very quickly. Let's try another experiment using the PVC pipe. Get a plastic or styrofoam cup, poke a tiny hole in the bottom, fill the cup with water so that constant stream flows out like this. Now, do the same thing as before to make the pipe negatively charged. Put the pipe near the water, and we are now water benders. What other cool experiments can you do to demonstrate static electricity? Maybe you're familiar with the one when you can give your friends an electric shot simply by touching them on their arm with your bare hands? Do you know how that's done? As my favorite scientist Marie Curie once said, nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Don't let fear keep you from exploring. See you next time. Bye. Hello, I'm Marie. Did you know that energy cannot be created or destroyed? It can only be transferred or changed from one form to another. Today we are going to be doing an experiment on how thermal energy or heat is transferred from one object to another. For this experiment, you'll need some balloons, a candle, some water, a lighter or matches. First, light up the candle and blow up your balloon. Tie the balloon securely. What do you think will happen when I place the balloon over the flame? Yes, it pops. This happens because the heat from the candle melts a tiny hole in the balloon, causing it to burst. To understand why this happens, first you need to know that everything in the universe is made out of tiny elements called atoms. When something gets hotter, its atoms move faster and away from each other, making the object expand. The opposite happens when the object is cooled. The molecules slow down and the object contracts. We can usually prevent the balloon from popping by putting some water inside. Let's try it again now. We'll hold the balloon with water over the flame for about five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. It didn't pop. With the water inside, the heat from the candle goes into the balloon and then it is absorbed by the water, preventing the balloon from melting and bursting. Now I'm going to place the balloon on the candle and extinguish the flame. And I'll just perform a little magic now. Ta-da! Okay, I don't have magical powers. Science can explain this. When the candle is lit, the heat energy expands the air molecules around it. But when the flame is put out, the air that is trapped cools down. The molecules contract and a suction pressure is created, allowing me to do this. Energy exists in many different forms. There is heat energy, which we just explored today, light energy, electrical energy, sound energy, kinetic energy, and lots more. What other fun experiments can you do to demonstrate transfer of energy? As my favorite scientist Marie Curie once said, 
Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Don't let fear stop you from exploring. See you next time. Bye. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Oh, hello. I'm Marie. Did you know the reason we're able to see ourselves in the mirror is because light is reflected off its surface and into our eyes? When light hits an object, it can't pass through. It bounces off or reflects. Today, we are going to reflect the light off of our smartphones to create a hologram. Here is what you'll need to do this experiment. A working smartphone, a smooth transparent plastic CD case, a cutter or pen knife, a ruler, a pencil, clear tape, and a piece of paper. Draw a trapezium on a piece of paper and cut it out. Trace the paper trapezium on the CD case and carefully cut out four shapes. Try not to scratch the surfaces. Smooth surfaces allow light to reflect at the same angle as it hits the surface, producing a clearer image. This is called specular reflection. If the plastic surface is rough due to scratches or dust, the reflected light is scattered in different directions, producing a less clear image. This is called diffuse reflection. Now assemble the four pieces together like this. Use tape or glue to hold it together. Put it over a video playing on your smartphone and watch the image come to life in the middle. Behold your very own hologram. There are several videos online that are made specially for this hologram experiment. There's a link to some of them in the description below. Or you could create your very own. Let's see what creative holograms you can conjure on your phones. As my favorite scientist Marie Curie once said, nothing in life is to be feared, it is only to be understood. Don't let fear keep you from exploring. See you next time. Hello, I am Robot Marie. No, don't worry. Robots haven't taken over the world. I am not really a robot. I'm Marie. <laughs> robots are becoming more and more human-like. Some people are fearful that robots will replace humans in the future, but I think we're more likely to work together with a robot and become friends. Just like how Argo's a robot, and he's my best friend in the whole world. Robotics is our future. Just look at Sophia. She was created by Hanson Robotics to be able to have human social interactions. She's appeared on multiple TV talk shows and can even sing a duet with you. In today's experiment, we'll be engineering our very own robot arm that can pick up objects. For this experiment, you'll need corrugated cardboard, string, plastic straws, all-purpose glue, a pencil, scissors, clear tape. Draw a hand on the corrugated cardboard and cut it out. Add in joints to the fingers by bending the cardboard slightly with a ruler. Cut out longer pieces of cardboard to make the arm. Glue the hand to the arm as such. Tape the arm to make it stronger. Make two cardboard handles for the arm. Cut the plastic straw into small pieces that are about one inch long. Glue the straw pieces to the hand. Next, thread the string through the straw. At the end of the fingers, tie two double knots to prevent the string from sliding down into the straw. At the end of the string, tie a loop that is big enough for your fingers to go through. Now put your fingers through the loop and bend them to make the hand move. Try picking up objects with your robot arm. This robot arm and our human arm work in a similar way. The cardboard is like our bones. 
the string is like our muscles and the straw pieces are like our tendons. The string guided by the straw pieces moves the cardboard fingers like just how our tendons and muscles help us move our arms and fingers. You can try adding in joints to your robot arm as well to give it more movement or add in the upper arm section to make it even more similar to a human arm. As my favorite scientist Marie Curie once said, nothing in life is to be feared, it is only to be understood. Don't let fear keep you from exploring. See you next time. To watch more, subscribe to our YouTube channel.